Hey everybody, welcome to my channel, I'm John. Today, we're gonna start messing with the gearing again on the 2019 Honda Monkey. This is something that I've done several times in the past, trying out different gear combinations and um, figuring out what I like the best. So, currently what's on the bike is a 14 tooth front sprocket and a 36 tooth rear sprocket. Factory sprockets are 15 tooth front and 34 rear. So that combination's kind of built for highway stuff and um, faster roads. So I never take this bike on fast roads. So all the gearing choices I've made have, have been based on get up and go and pull out of the, uh, the whole sort of stuff, the low RPM gains. So I ride a lot of dirt, um, trail ride whenever I can, and just neighborhood cruise. So for me, the more fun gearing ratio is the lower stuff. So the things that are gonna make the bike accelerate faster. And there's, there's quite a bit of um, mystery to gearing. And with bigger bikes, it's easy because they have the power to, to get up and go and pull through to the top of the RPM range. But the Monkey doesn't. So the Honda Monkey, it only has about nine horsepower from the factory, I think. And one of the ways you can optimize how the bike feels is by adjusting the gearing on the bike. So a lot of people think when you change the gearing, specifically to a 14 tooth front sprocket, that it's gonna make the bike faster. That is not necessarily true in most cases. Some people might see a top end gain because it's optimizing the way the bike and powertrain work together with that particular weight of rider. But in my experiences, swapping to the 14 is gonna, gonna give the bike more acceleration. It's gonna give it a, a faster pull from the lower RPM range but it'll probably lose a couple mile an hour on the top. So this really depends. I'm a heavier guy, I'm like 200 pounds. So for me, having that extra pull out of the hole in the lower RPMs, probably better for me. Now, if you're light and um, I'd say 150 pounds or less and you ride this bike, the stock gearing is probably gonna be pretty good for you because the bike doesn't have to work as hard to get up to speed as opposed to somebody of my weight. So with all that, um, I don't know what the perfect gear ratio is for you, so that's why I kind of try these things. I don't know what the perfect gear ratio is for me either. But I do know on my Honda Grom, I have a 2015 Honda Grom, and I put a 14 tooth front and a 37 tooth rear sprocket on it when I put the 14 36 on this bike just to feel the difference, and I really, really, really like the way that bike feels. So that's what I'm going to do today. We're going to keep the 14 tooth front on there. And then we're gonna put a JT 37 tooth rear sprocket on the back. And this is just a simple steel sprocket. They're 14 or $15. Um, you know, you can get them uh, just about anywhere, really. Amazon um, or your favorite shop. Um, my favorite shops are uh, Brock's Performance, um, TB Parts. These are two people that sell these. Man in the Box, I'm not sure if they sell this one or not, but they should. Um, they sell their own ver version too. This is steel, Man in the Box sells an aluminum version, which is a lighter um, rotating weight thing. So that might be the route you'd wanna take. But for me, for experimentation purposes, I just went for the cheaper route. Those aluminum rear sprockets tend to get a little pricey sometimes. The one I have on here now is a Vortex, it's aluminum. And uh, I think it was about 40 or 50 bucks, whereas this is 15 or $16. So. I mean, you be the judge of, of what you want on your bike and how much you want to spend. The difference between aluminum and steel are going to be weight, of course. And I am, can't really say what is the longevity of an aluminum sprocket. A lot of people will say they wear out fast. Um, they're probably right because aluminum will wear out faster than steel. But at the end of the day, it depends on how much you ride. If you commute with the bike and you ride a lot, probably want to stick with the steel. If you're like me and you just play around with the bike, aluminum's gonna be just fine. So I'll put some links down in the description where you can find these sprockets for your bike. So also, while I'm changing out the sprocket, I'm gonna take the opportunity to install a gold chain. So um, a lot of people also have their own opinions, very heated arguments sometimes about chains as well. So this is gonna be the uh, DID racing chain. Um, this is the 420 chain it's uh it's got some er i don't know what all this means i'm sure it means something but basically 
It's a DID 420 NZ3 super non O-ring chain. It's 100 links long. The monkey has 92 or 93 links, I think. So I didn't want to get a whole bunch of extra links I didn't need. And uh, that's important. So when you're shopping for a chain, you're going to want to target like 100 links. And I will also put a link to this chain down in the description on where you can find it and pick up the same one that I used if you like it. If you have something else in mind, there's that too. So one thing to note about chains, I've done a little bit of research and a lot of people want to go to an O-ring chain. So you start, so you heard me say non-O-ring chain. So there's an O-ring chain and there's non-O-ring chain and there's X rings and all sorts of different types of chains nowadays. To me, um, those chains get a little heavy, maybe get a little harder to turn because an O-ring chain is kind of like a lower maintenance chain. Um, it, it's meant to be quieter. It's meant to not need to be oiled and greased so much and cleaned so much. It's, it's a good thing. It's, um, it's a really nice um, idea. But sometimes on a low power bike, throwing too big and heavy of a chain or a chain that doesn't turn as fast or is not as free and as loose will tend to slow down the bike a little bit. So I feel as if the monkey doesn't have any room to be slowed down anymore. Uh, it's a, a bike that we're constantly seeing if we can make faster, right? Not slower. So if we add a Hayabusa or a Jixer 1000, I don't think it's going to care what kind of chain it's on. But the Honda Monkey, 9 horsepower, 10 horsepower if you've modded it a little bit, it probably will care if you have too heavy and too restrictive uh, of a chain. So that's why I chose the chain I did, the DID Gold Chain. Once again, I'm going to put these things down in the description kind of help guide you towards what I recommend and um, where to buy them. So enough talking, let's get these parts on the bike and I'm just going to show you the process that I use. Might not be the process that you use, but it's just the way that I did it and we're going to roll through that and maybe at the end if there's anything that comes up that I feel I need to share with you about the install, we'll revisit that and let you know. Alright, let's get working on the bike. 